Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I'm going to explain Paling solution test, Paling's test. This test is used again for the identification of aldehydes. In my last talk to you, I have explained the chemistry of Toland's test. Their test helps you to identify the presence of uh, aldehydes as unknown compounds given to you uh, during that specific confirmatory test, you know. Uh, we discussed that the Pollen's reagent actually which is an ammoniated silver nitrate solution you know that undergo a reduction where Ag plus is supposed to become Ag zero it goes to reduction you know in Toland's test let me Right to read for your current information. Okay, what happens during the test? An aldehyde is oxidized to carboxylic acids. This oxidation is co parallel with the reduction of the silver. This reduced silver gets deposited. It gets deposited along the walls of the test tube, you know, something like that. So that's silver metal that gets deposited along the walls of the test tube. It appears to us as a mirror. We also called it a silver mirror. Test, you know, we call it silver mirror test. So this happens in Toland's test. There is also a specific test for the confirmation of aldehydes. Why we use Toland's test? We apply Toland's test when we want to distinguish aldehydes from the ketones. Why we want to distinguish? I have told you previously that two for D and pH test. It confirms the presence of carbonyl, carbonyl compounds and the carbonyl compounds are both, you know, they are the ketones as well as they are the, they are the aldehydes as well, okay. So once we apply to for DNK, it turns out to be positive, confirming that the compound carries carbonyl carbon, means it can be nearly had in a ketone. Chances of both. So in order to specify what is present, either aldehyde or ketone, we apply the Toland's test. That's only for aldehyde. If we see a transformation of a mirror around the wall of the tube it confirms the given carbonyl is an aldehyde if we don't observe a silver mirror uh, around the walls of the test tube then it means the aldehydes are not there the ketones are there so this is how the Toland's test helps us to identify the presence of uh, aldehydes and in the Toland test what is actually the chemistry the silver ions which are Ag positive ones they are reduced to Ag zeros and those silver metals get deposited and during this reduction there is a parallel oxidation LD and the keto aldehydes undergo an oxidation and produce carboxylic acid also inside the test tube but we don't observe them what is apparent change the formation of Ag metals parallel to this reaction ultimately automatically confirm the presence of aldehyde. So this is how one could apply Toland's test for the confirmation of aldehydes. At the same time, there is another test that is called phalanx solution test. If you don't have access to the Toland's reagent, you can't apply Toland's test on aldehyde, then you can go for phalanx solution test, phalanx test, you know. That's also an alternative test, also for the confirmation of aldehyde. It confirms only aldehydes, like Toland's. Okay. 
<clears throat> or sometimes you want to be a bit more cautious if your 2 4 dnk turns out to be positive you can apply tollens as well as felling both to confirm whether really the aldehydes are present or they really are absent you can apply both test one by one tollens as well as felling just to see whether aldehydes are absent or present so this is all about the basic why we are going to study phalanx lotion test today so this is how we have reached the point of phalanx lotion because we have already discussed 2 4 dnk test we have already discussed tollens test and now today i am going to discuss the phalanx lotion test just like tollens in phalanx the aldehydes when they react with the phalanx reagent when they react with phalanx reagent, you know, the aldehydes do get oxidized again. They do produce carboxylic acids again. In both cases, in Toland test, the aldehydes undergo oxidation, produces ben, uh, corresponding uh, carboxylic acids. In the same way, the phalanx solutions also oxidize the aldehydes into corresponding carboxylic acids what really happens in the phalanx solution there is present copper 2 plus 2 as in case of uh, tollens test i would write over here you know for again for your understanding tollen test In Tollen test, what is happening? Aldehydes undergo oxidation and they also produce carboxylic, carboxylic acids. Okay? What happens on the parallel of this one? In this, the Tollen's reagent that carries Ag positive it undergoes reduction it forms ag0 this is the chemistry of the tollens test in case of phalanx what is happening when you react your given aldehydes with phalanx reagent which carries copper to ions the aldehydes are oxidized to carboxylic acid plus we receive Cu plus 1, mean copper is also reduced, it undergoes oxidation, aldehydes and ketones undergo, they are oxidized, the copper is reduced, you know, again, however the metal has got changed, in case of tollens, the Ag silver is involved, plus 1 is reduced to Ag0. Over here, Cu plus 2 is reduced to Cu plus 1. So, this reduction of the metal that confirms the presence of aldehydes. What happens actually? This copper 2, copper 2 in phalanx, in phalanx reagent, that undergoes a reduction to Cu plus 1. What actually happens? Phalanx region. This copper plus 2 is of blue color. It's a blue color. When it is reduced to Cu plus 1, it becomes a reddish brown, you know. It becomes a reddish brown color so change in color the copper cu plus 2 in the phalanx solution is reduced to cu plus 1 this is supposed to be blue in color once it is reduced it becomes reddish brown so change in color when 
the color of the test tube becomes reddish brown it means there is an aldehyde is present which has undergone oxidation and the copper cu plus 2 has undergone reduction to cu plus 1 so this is the basic chemistry uh, which is involved in phalanx test in phalanx solution test for the confirmation of uh, aldehydes specifically it is uh, not given by the ketones means ketones do not give positive phalanx solution test only aldehydes give uh, phalanx solution test you know this is a, a bit basic about it let me discuss in a bit detail uh, what happens inside the test tube you know let, let me keep it there so you can compare at the end as well so once you take you um, a test tube we put in phalanx reagent that is blue in color then it is the number one you know we put in number one then we put in number two that is and given aldehyde we put that in so what happens inside the tube the cu plus is converted into cu plus one so initially cu plus two was of blue color when it is reduced to cu1 it is it shows reddish brown color you know reddish brown so once you see a reddish brown color then it means you have an aldehyde as a given unknown compound so this is a bit basic about the how we perform phalanx solution we use phalanx reagent where copper twos are present they are supposed to be of blue color when we they react with aldehydes aldehydes undergo oxidations and they become carboxylic acids mean they get oxidized who gets oxidized aldehydes get oxidized into carboxylic acids better to write this way you know so you can understand it more aldehydes becomes carboxylic acid due to oxidation and this goes to reduction you know so this is how the phalanx solution test is performed inside the test tubes the copper twos are converted into copper ones two gets converted into one mean there is a reduction in the oxidation state in the oxidation number this is all. Let me explain a bit again. Phalanx reagent. What is phalanx reagent? Phalanx reagent. Let me explain the chemistry of phalanx reagent. You know, it is phalanx reagent composed of two things. One is copper sulfate, pentahydrated dissolved in water this is called solution solution a that is this one dissolved in water plus we have Plus we have Rochelle's salt. We have Rochelle's salt. Phalanx solution consists of two things, two solutions. Solution A should be copper sulfate and the solution B should be Rochelle's salt. Solution of Rochelle's salt. What is Rochelle's salt? That let me explain that again to you guys. Mm. Rochelle's salt is
this is Rochelle's salt. You would have an idea about tartaric acid. From the tartaric acid, they have generated salt using two metals, sodium and potassium. It is called sodium potassium tartarate. That salt is called Rochelle salt, you know. C double O, then we have a K for the potassium. We have C double O N A for the sodium. There are two carbons having protons and then hydroxyls around. This is the Rochelle salt. In fact, it's, it carries sodium, potassium, uh, tartarate from the tartaric acid. We dissolve this but in the water. We dissolve this but in the water. This is called solution B. And then we dissolve copper sulfate in the water. And this body is called solution A. Solution A, solution B, we mix them together. That mixture of the two solutions, A and B, that will be called as the fouling reagent. You got the idea? Fouling reagent is a mixture of two solutions. Solution A and a solution B. What is solution A? Solution A means solution of copper sulfate pentahydrate dissolved in water. Secondly, solution B is sodium potassium tartarate dissolved in water. Sodium potassium tartarate is also called Rochelle's salt and it, the formula looks like this one. It has been derived, it has been prepared from tartaric acid. That is why it is also called sodium potassium tartarate, you know. So this is a bit basic about the uh, fouling reagent. Out of this, in, uh, when we mix these two salts together, this copper, which is copper plus two actually, a part of the copper sulfate, this is the active entity in this whole solution. As I've just discussed a few minutes ago, that copper two, this is the body which gives blue color to this whole solution. The phallic solution becomes blue in color due to the presence of copper 2, you know. So during the reaction of the phalanx reagent with the aldehydes and ketones, the copper 2 is converted into copper 1 and then the color changes from blue to reddish brown. The change in color from blue to reddish brown confirms the presence of aldehydes, you know. Let me give you a glimpse again. Let's say aldehydes, we use filling reagents in which copper plus 2 is the active entity. It goes, the aldehyde goes, undergoes oxidation and becomes sort of a carboxylic acid. The coppers that undergoes reduction during the reaction and it becomes Cu plus 1. This is supposed to be blue in the beginning and after the reaction it becomes reddish brown and that appearance of reddish brown color suggests that there was an aldehyde which would have been uh, oxidized into carboxylic acid whereas Cu plus 2s would have been reduced to Cu1s you know. So this is the basic idea, this is the basic reaction which is involved, which happens inside the test tube and it, this reaction confirms the presence of aldehydes. Let me give you one thing more. The felling reagent, the one I've just explained, mixture of solution A, mixture of solution B, is a weaker again oxidizing agent it's a weaker oxidizing agent can't confirm aromatic aldehydes you know 
it is too weak that it is unable to react with aromatic aldehydes. Only aliphatic aldehydes can be confirmed using the phalanx solution test. If you have an aromatic aldehyde, like say very, very much known compound called benzaldehyde, it's an aromatic aldehyde. This won't be confirmed using phalanx reagent because that reagent is too weak, it can't oxidize aromatic aldehydes. For such compounds, butter to apply a tolerance test that is a bit stronger reagent compared to phalanx reagent. So phalanx reagents do confirm the presence of uh, aldehydes, but they are not that good for the confirmation of aromatic aldehydes. Aromatic aldehydes could be confirmed only with the tolerance test. So this is all about the chemistry of the phalanx solution test. I hope you have got the idea that how this test can help you to identify the pants of aldehydes. Uh, it can help you to distinguish between an aldehyde and a ketone because phalanx solution test only confirms the presence of aldehydes, not the ketones, because the copper can react with aldehydes only. Similarly, so, in case of colon test, the Ag was being reduced when it was up against the aldehydes. When it was to be used against the ketones, there was no reaction at all. So this is how the phalanx solution, the phalanx test. Uh, is applicable for the confirmation of aldehydes and not the ketone. These two tests can help you to distinguish aldehydes and ketone. Once your 2,4 DNPH test becomes positive, means the carbonyl compounds are present, then you can move further to specify the presence of aldehydes or ketones. So, hope you have got the idea about the 2,4 DNPH test, the chemistry involved in the 2,4 DNPH test. Then I have given you a separate lecture on Tholen's test. I have explained the chemistry, how the oxidation reduction happens inside the test tubes, how the carboxylic acids are produced there. So next, I have also explained the phalanx solution test. I have given you an idea how uh, this test helps to identify the presence of aldehydes due to the change in color from blue to the reddish brown. Uh, hope this is, these lectures have made you people able to identify the presence of carbonyl compounds and then you can identify further the aldehydes from the ketones. So if you do have any idea, uh, any problems, if you have any questions, just put those questions in commentary on YouTube, on my channel and uh, you may approach me on my WhatsApp, you can email your queries, I will be happy to respond at the earliest convenience inshallah. So thank you very much for your presence and your attention please. Assalamu alaikum.